Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the four steps of producing a successful short story anthology as an unknown editor. Now, if you haven't reviewed my videos on pitching and process, I highly recommend that you do first before you delve into this particular video. This video is going to talk about the actual strategy behind putting together a successful anthology. Now, what do I mean by that? We're talking about the order of stories, the type of stories, which stories you put in the front, which stories you put in the back. Now, today I'm going to talk about four steps in the production process that will help you create a successful short story anthology. Now, the first is start strong. What do I mean by that? Well, you want to put a story at the very beginning of your anthology that really hooks the reader, that really makes them want to read further. You don't want to put something that is avant-garde or experimental or challenges the reader in a major way. And the reason is, is you want to keep your audience as broad as possible. You don't want to scare them away. You want to take something that's pretty simple and engaging that really gets them reading the anthology. And you also want to pick something that embodies the theme of that anthology in a very guttural, intuitive way. Now, typically, you also want to start strong by including a headliner because that'll also entice the reader to read further. Now, Typically, you want to put your best and simplest story at the very beginning, but it's not always going to be your best. Sometimes it'll be your second best or one of your top three stories, but it will have a headliner. At the end of the day, you want to optimize for a headliner and a great story that encompasses your theme in a very basic and intuitive way. So number one, start strong. Number two, end the long. You don't want to put a novella at the very beginning of an anthology because your readers might, if they don't like that particular story, get tired and just put it down and not buy it. However, if they're willing to read all the way through, you want to put a longish story at the end. And you also want it to be one of your better stories because you want the readers who have read through the entire anthology to have a very satisfying finish. So make sure you end long. Step number three, alternate up and comers with headliners. You don't wanna put all your headliners in the front. You don't wanna put them all in the back. You don't wanna put them all in the middle. You wanna alternate between the two so that there's a more even feel to that anthology. And then number four, and the other three items touched on this a bit, but you want to be very deliberate about the order of your stories. And in being deliberate about your stories, there's four different things that I always look for. The first is tone. As an example, you don't want all of your horror stories at the very beginning or all your funny stories in the middle. You want to alternate between different tones. You don't want to have all your depressing stories at the beginning of a particular anthology because you're gonna lose your readers. You wanna be very deliberate about alternating the emotional range of your stories as you go throughout that anthology. Number two, you also wanna alter length. For instance, you don't wanna have 10 flash fiction stories in the beginning and then the rest novellas, or you don't wanna have three novellas in the beginning, and then the rest short stories, you want to try to alternate so that a reader can really get engrossed in one story and then they can spend a quick five minutes on the next one as they're taking a mental break from the long novella that they just read. So make sure you alternate your story length as you go through it. Third, you want to intersperse stories with different styles. So as an example, you might have one story that's in very simple, plain language toward the beginning, and then the next story might be a little bit more ornate or literary. At the very end, you might want to have a more experimental story. And the reason you might want to have an experimental story toward the end is that 
the readers who have already committed to that point are more likely to want to be challenged at the very end because and they're also more likely to read it through because they've read through all the other stories so just be very deliberate about how you do that and then the fourth piece is try to alternate stories that have different variations on theme so I talked about in the prior two videos about my anthology which was Weird World War III had a requirement that there had to be a conventional war between the United States and Soviet Union with a weird fictional element so I might alternate stories from one with a US protagonist then to one with a Soviet protagonist then back to one with a US protagonist I might alternate weird fictional themes one might be cosmic horror one might be a hard science fiction thriller with a weird element and vice versa so make sure that you're deliberate about all these things so as you're constructing an anthology those are the four items that you should always be mindful of so that you're not just haphazardly putting one story after the other you want to make sure that you have a very thoughtful and methodical approach about how the stories live and breathe with each other. Now, you can't guarantee that those stories will be read in order, but you want to put the anthology together in such a way that if it is read in order, it will deliver a very satisfying experience to the reader. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, hit like and subscribe and the notification button. And I also hope you join me next week in the fourth video in this series on promotion. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.